Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, in the name of God, the compassionate, the merciful. Uh, my name is Ibrahim Hooper. I'm National Communications Director with the Council on American-Islamic Relations. Uh, we're here today to offer the Muslim community's condemnation of the killing of the American ambassador in Libya and the uh, killings of the other diplomatic personnel there, and to condemn the attacks on the diplomatic facilities in Libya and uh, Egypt. Uh, first up to speak will be CARE's National Executive Director, Nehad Awad, who will have a, a few words and be followed by the other leaders you see here, who will introduce, will introduce, they'll offer a few words, and then we'll have a quick question and answer at the end, and uh, people will be available for one-on-one -on -one interviews at the conclusion of the news conference. So, Nehad Awad, CARE National Executive Director. Thank you, Ibrahim. In the name of God, the compassionate, the merciful. Nihad Awad, N-I-H-A-D, A-W-A-D. I'm very outraged and shocked by the killing of our U.S. ambassador and his colleagues um, in the embassy in Benghazi, Libya. This is a crime against our diplomats. It's a crime against our faith. It's a crime against humanity. The killers of our diplomats deserve condemnation and should be brought to justice. This attack is inexcusable and cannot be justified under any justification. We know that this attack could have been motivated by a film allegedly produced by some people here but we remind our people here and in the Middle East, in the Muslim world, that an attack on innocent people is an attack on our faith. There is no ifs and buts when it comes to the hurt of innocent people. There has been a lot of misinformation about the background of this propaganda uh, film. This is a trashy film. It doesn't deserve our attention doesn't deserve our time, it doesn't even deserve our reaction. But we as Muslims also believe in the right of people to express themselves. We, have, we believe also in the right for people to protest peacefully. But we cannot use violence against innocent people. We cannot use violence against diplomatic facilities. So this is outrageous. And I'm also pleased to see that major organizations and major scholars in the Muslim world and in the Middle East have condemned the killing of our diplomats. And we urge them also to remind people of our beautiful faith and the character and manner of the Prophet, peace be upon him. The Prophet never returned an insult for an insult. He never abused his attackers or his abusers. He was very forgiving. He was very tolerant. He embraced his accusers and attackers. This is the Islamic spirit, and this is the, these are the Islamic values. We remind our people of a very important verse in the Quran. And allow me to say it in Arabic, because I'm speaking also to the Arab world, to our brothers and sisters in the Arab world. God says in the Quran, وَلَا تَزِيرُ وَازِرَةٌ وزر أخرى. No soul should carry the burden of another. This is a clear statement. It is not subjected to even interpretation. We should not play into the hands of extremists here or extremists over there, such as Terry Jones and others. We should not listen to the voices of division, the voices of intolerance, and voices of conflict. We should rise above these attempts to distract us from our day-to-day -day business and the service that we provide to our families, to our neighborhoods, in our societies. Ambassador Stevens, Sean Smith, Sean Smith and other diplomats, they were honorable American diplomats. They dedicated their lives to public service. We pray for their souls. We offer condolences 
to their families and their loved ones. Thank you. Next, we'll have Dr. Assam Omeish. He's the director of the Libyan Emergency Task Force and a member of the Libyan American uh, community, and he's also was a personal friend of the ambassador. Members of the press, colleagues. As members of the Libyan American community, we are utterly shocked and saddened by the brutal killing of the U.S. ambassador, Chris Stevens, and his members of his staff in Libya. Our deepest and most heartfelt condolences go to the families and the friends of the late Ambassador Christopher Stevens and his colleagues. We share with the American people and our administration the sadness of these tragic events, and we reaffirm our commitment and resolve to stand against violent extremism under any circumstance and in whatever context. I know the late Honorable Stevens. I know him as a man of honor, man of dedication and commitment to the progress of Libya and the freedom of the Libyan people. Along the journey that we've had this past year and beyond for the struggle of the Libyan people to attain their liberty, he was there. He was one of the first people to travel to Benghazi to help save the city of Benghazi and the people of Benghazi. I have recently came from Libya, and I was in a meeting with him at the U.S. Embassy in Tripoli. We chatted, we spoke about the nascent democracy in Libya, and I shared with him and enjoyed very much his zeal and his optimism for the great future awaiting Libya. He invited me to his inauguration when he was here in the State Department with Secretary Clinton and Senator Luger, and I attended a personal and private reception with his family and his parents. I surely miss Chris and pray for his family and his friends. This is a sad day for the Libyan-American friendship, but these colossal events will not detract us nor deter us from pursuing a brighter future of freedom, rule of law, and respect of human dignity in Libya in partnership with our great ally here in the U.S. and the Obama administration. And we call upon the Libyan government and the political leadership to take firm and swift action to bring the savage perpetrators to justice and to affirm the will of the Libyan people to resolve the security threats and the uncontrolled militias that are threatening the future of democracy and peace in Libya. Thank you. Next, we'll hear from Rafi Udin Ahmed. He's the vice chair of the Council of Muslim Organizations of the Greater Washington, D.C. area, and the president of the Muslim uh, Association of Virginia. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Rafi, R-A-F-I, last name A-H-M-E-D. Uh, on behalf of uh, our American Muslim community, I would like to extend my condolences to Ambassador uh, J. S uh, Christopher Stephen and his staff members, along with their families. Uh, the Council of Muslim Organization of Greater Washington, uh, D.C. area, and uh, Muslim Association of Virginia, uh, and uh, American community across the United States highly condemns the killing of any innocent person, especially those who are representing our country. Unfortunately, these hideous actions were committed in response to a video that was created mocking Islam's founding prophet. The prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that certainly does not justify for any murderous crime. However, if we look at the root cause of all of this, we will find something called hate. It is troublesome for any religious followers to find that their prominent religious figure or symbol is being insulted or humiliated. Similarly, if Jesus was mocked by various other groups or sects, it would be just as painful for American Muslims as well. I hope and pray for a more understanding world, not of hate, but ju uh, just the opposite, one of love, 
a world of understanding and finding similarities instead of differences. I also pray that the people who are being oppressed mentally and emotionally by these videos <coughs> find patience and do not resort to violence. The very lessons the Prophet Muhammad has taught us, instead I propose two people who are hurt by these video, both Muslims and non-Muslims, both Americans and non-Americans, to use constructive method, such as positive speech, blog writing, and interactive anti-hate dialogue to overcome the, uh, their anger and to find solution. Use your tongue, not your weapons. That is the only way um, we can hope for something greater. Thank you. And next, we'll hear from Naeem Beg, uh, Vice President for Public Affairs for the Islamic Circle of North America. Thank you, Brother Ibrahim Hooper. In the name of God, the Compassionate, the Merciful, uh, my name is Naeem Beg, N A E E M B A I G, Beg, and I'm uh, Vice President for Public Affairs for Islamic Circle of North America. Um, Echoing uh, the sentiments with my other uh, Muslim uh, colleagues who presented their statements, um, the Islamic Circle of North America uh, issued a press release today uh, condemning uh, attacks on U.S. missions in Egypt and Libya. IGNA strongly condemns the violent attack on American embassies in Egypt and, Lib Egypt and Libya. Nothing is worth the cost of a human life, and we firmly believe that there's no honor or faith in committing such violence. We extend our deepest condolences to the families of U.S. Ambassador Christopher Stevens and to all Americans at this tragic time. Today we lost a diplomat and a friend to the people of Libya. We commend him and U.S. envoys in Libya and elsewhere for their dedication to peace. We are disturbed that the perpetrators of these attacks are claiming to defend the honor of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. The Prophet was a man of peace and mercy. To engage in such violence and senseless killing is to truly defile his legacy. We implore Muslims in the region and around the world to remember the Prophet's teachings and honor his life by following his example of kindness and love in the face of hostility. Thank you very much. <clears throat> and finally, we'll hear from Imam uh, Johari. He's with the Dar al Hijra Islamic Center in Northern Virginia, and he's also with the Council of Muslim Organizations of the Greater Washington, D.C. area. First greeting you, assalamu alaikum. My name, Johari Abdul Malik, J O H A R I. Last name, A-B-D-U-L hyphen M-A-L-I-K. I serve as an imam and outreach director for the Dar Hijra Islamic Center in Falls Church, Virginia. First beginning on behalf of the faith community to say that we express our sincerest condolences uh, to uh, Chris Stevens' family as well as to Sean Smith's family and the other staffers who lost their lives. Without any hesitation, this act of barbaric violence bears no connection with the great faith of Islam. It is the action of individuals who are filled with anger and hatred, but unfortunately living in a world of what Martin Luther King called the axes of evil poverty, ignorance, and militarism that we see, unfortunately, those responding in ways that are inappropriate. There is no justification from the Quran or from the prophetic traditions to justify defending the honor of the Prophet Muhammad by this violence. We thank Secretary Clinton for her expressing that this will not derail the relationship of friendship being built with the Libyan people and we extend our thanks to President Obama who has pledged 
his continued support for this nascent democracy. We pray that this will cause us to strengthen, to redouble our efforts to fight against radicalism and terrorism wherever we find it. And we as American Muslims pledge ourselves in that fight. Thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum.